eight jobs that you could be working when you immigrate to a new country. So, do you plan to immigrate? Do you plan to relocate to a new country? Maybe traveling from South Africa to Australia, maybe from Nigeria to the United States, maybe from Zambia to the United Kingdom, England, Wales, Ireland, or Scotland, or you're relocating or immigrating from Lithuania to Belgium. Wherever it is you're moving from, and two. Now, in this video, I'm going to highlight eight jobs, eight professions that you could start doing as soon as you get off the plane, right off the back, and start earning money to look after yourself, to look after your family that you're immigrating with, to look after your girlfriend, or to look after your wife. Now, if you're interested in this content, if you're interested in this topic, Stay tuned, I'll be back with more. You know the way I do it when I drop lyrical. Anytime I spit lyrical, philosophical, all the niggas mimical, but they stare still on chicken literal. Punch lines go lateral. Snap them on that Hello, hello YouTube, hello Chronix. How are you all doing today? Now in this video, I'm going to be highlighting eight different professions, eight different jobs that you could start as soon as you arrive your new country. So you're relocating from one country, maybe your home country, to a different country. So maybe you're from Zambia, maybe you're from Zimbabwe, Ethiopia, South Africa, maybe you're from Nigeria, maybe you're from even Lithuania and you're immigrating or relocating to America, the United States, or you're immigrating to Australia, or you're immigrating to Canada. The United Kingdom, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, even England. Now you want to start earning money as soon as possible to look after yourself or to look after your family or the people you're immigrating with. So in this video, we're going to be highlighting eight different jobs that you don't need any certification to start. So you don't need to go for a course, you don't need to go for some program and sit for an exam to get a certification before you can be approved to start working. You can start this immediately, okay? Now if you're interested in this topic, you might want to think about subscribing to our channel because we come out with topics of this nature and we drop videos every Mondays and Thursdays, okay? Now I want you all to stick with me, watch this video to the end because towards the end of the video I'm going to run a cost-benefit analysis so that you can know the amount of money you stand to potentially earn in each and every one of these jobs, okay? So let's begin. So the first job you could start with when you arrive in your country is being a hair stylist, okay? I don't care whatever country you're immigrating from. I don't care how extreme your religious beliefs are. I don't care how extreme your political beliefs are. Everybody does something to their hair. Now look at my hair, I have dreadlocks on. Some people like to go on low cuts, I'm talking about men. Some men like to go extreme and maybe grow their hair long. Women, whether you're from India or you're from China, or you're from Chad or you're from Canada, Australia, whatever, when you see someone's hair that looks nice and is properly done, we all pay these people compliments. Oh, I like your hair. So. Doing people's hair, maybe as a hairstylist, a barber, or a hairstylist, a woman braiding people's hair, or styling whatever, however they want it done, is a very, very hot job that people in every country who do this get paid. Now, maybe your currency in your country is really poor and performing poorly in the international stage and has been devalued like our Nigerian Naira. But if you travel to countries like the United States, like the United Kingdom, particularly England or Canada or Australia, you get paid in dollars, pounds and euros just to make people's hair, okay? I know in England for a fact you get paid up to a hundred dollars, two hundred, no, up to a hundred pounds 
200 pounds and even in some cases 300 pounds per customer and if you're a man or you're a barber you get paid as much as five to ten pounds per person and if you're running what i'm what i have on the dreadlocks you you get paid as much as 100 to 200 pounds per person who you style their hair to be like mine okay now let's move on to number two 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 so being a beautician Okay, now a beautician is people who are in charge of making people look good by virtue of makeup, doing people's makeup, facials, maybe microblading their eyebrows, maybe um, styling their facial hairs and all that kind of stuff. Now these people get paid a lot because their job has a lot of applications. So you could be a makeup artist for a celebrity, you could be a makeup artist for a high profile personality who always want one or two touches on your faces before they make an appearance in an event or whatever. Now, if I need to state this here, okay? When you arrive in a new country, it's gonna be difficult for you to become a sole proprietor or to be an entrepreneur off the back okay it's gonna take you some time so you probably if you want to be a hairstylist you probably have to go to a hair salon or go to a barber shop and stop get a job there or if you're a beautician in your home country you might want to go to a beauty parlor and get a job there and work your way up then maybe when you've saved up enough money you could start your own business now at the point of starting your own business i have to say this guys you need certification you need some permits to start your own business so this video is just for people who have these skills and want to get jobs in existing establishments it's going to be easy for you to do this okay you don't need a permit to do this maybe you just need to get an NIS number and insurance number social security number, but everybody needs to get that. Okay, so as a beautician you get paid You get paid really well. You get paid really well to do people's makeup You, you could even get a job as a beautician in a barber shop or in a hair salon So when people come to do their hair, they also want to do their I don't know their facials makeup do pedicure and manicure did I pronounce that word? Pedicure, a pedicure, whatever, your fingers and your toes, okay? Now, number three, a fashion designer. A fashion designer. Now, fashion designers are people who design clothes and make clothes. So you could be a tailor, you could just be someone that puts fabrics together. This job is really, really hot, guys. Because I remember when I was in England, and I was looking for someone who was going to sew my native Nigerian type of clothes for me to put on for a Nigerian event that we were having back then. The, the amount of money that was quoted for me to get this done was mind-boggling. I think it, they told me to get the top and the pants done was going to be, I think it was upwards of 500 pounds. And I'm like, what the f Okay, I'm not gonna swear, okay? So it's, they get paid lots and lots of money. Now, sometimes you could even get Western people who wanna sh make an appearance in an African event or an African person who wants to make an appearance in a French event. So they go out and just get these clothes done and it's huge. You get paid lots of money to just so disclose for people who want to make an appearance in an event okay now a fashion designer gets paid between two to a thousand pounds or two to a thousand dollars sometimes even two thousand dollars for just a piece of attire so I'm talking about the shirts the pants or if there's a hat on whatever you get paid lots and lots of money to get this done now I also need to put this in quickly as a disclaimer this video doesn't take into account the amount of money you're going to be paying in taxes and trust me if you're doing this legally so if you're attached to a company that does this or if you've worked up worked up the ladder and you're now in a position where you want to own your own business you're definitely going to be taxed 
And if you're in England, you're gonna be taxed a lot. America, I know is you tax as you earn, so it just depends on the bracket you fall into. But in England, for a fact, you're gonna be taxed well, so you need to take that into account. Now, number four, four and four. Number four is a fine artist. Now, a fine artist, people who fall into this bracket, this category, are people who are into sketching, okay? People who are cartoonists, people who are impressionists, realists, illustrationists. Now, these are people who are very good with their hands. They know how to draw, they know how to sketch. Now, these people have broad spectrum application, okay? You could work with an online blog, you can work with an online magazine, you can even work with a paper, a newspaper company, and all you do is just the cartoon column, the sketches. You could even work with the legal sector, and when you're in court, and I don't know when you see that in movies, you see people who all they do in court are just take a pen and they sketch the person who's on the trial and stuff like this. You get paid loads. I think you get paid as much as 50 or 50 to 500 pounds and dollars per commission okay so per job you could get paid as low as 50 or as high as 500 pounds if you're in the united kingdom euros if you're in europe or dollars if you are in america australia or canada now this is like i said this is a job that you don't need certification this is something that you've already gotten certified and you already got that recognition in your home country this is skills that you can deliver when you're asked to so you don't even need to go to sit for any course or get any certification to do this in your new country of residence Okay, now number five, 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 I'm alive, five, five. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> number five, computer scientists. Now, the people that fall into this category are people who are into coding, people who are into programming, people who are into website designs, people who are into building of apps and software. These people make up this category of computer scientists. Now these people, I guess this is where the world is going to right now. This is the direction that the world is going to right now. Everybody, I used to have some clients in China. All my clients back then were into some form of IT. Coding, programming, software designs, app design, you name it, they were all into it at the time. So if you are into this, you don't even need to work for a company. You could just, I don't know, put an ad out on Facebook or informal ad, not even paid ads. Hi guys, I'm into website design, I'm into coding. Or you could attach yourself to a company and land a hot job. Now people who are in this category, they get paid all the money. Go home, you're done, you're made. They get paid lots and lots of money. I'm talking about upwards of $20,000 or as much as even 30,000 pounds. Although I have to say this, it depends on the company you're working with and it depends on the level of super proprietorship and the level of, I don't know, um, recognition that you start to get because obviously the more recognition you get the more jobs or the high level type of jobs that you're going to be able to land but you can work anywhere you can work in a hospital you can work even in stock exchange you can work in the bank there's always an application there's always a position that is applicable to someone who is versatile and good in IT, okay? Number six, number number six, a fitness specialist, someone who is into fitness. Now, the world is moving in the direction of wellness and healthy living. Most people are cutting down on the type of um, bad diets they normally eat or bad food they normally eat, and everybody's trying to embrace a healthy lifestyle and with healthy lifestyle comes workout and with workout comes fitness and with fitness you need a specialist so if you are into fitness from your home country whether you're satisfied or not certified 
you can become a fitness instructor, a fitness specialist, maybe by partnering with a gym in the city that you travel to in your new country. Or if you find people who you think that are not healthy, which I don't know how you can know they're not healthy because sometimes when you meet these people, it could be that you're body shaming them, so you have to be careful. But you can partner with a gym, and when you start growing up in recognition, you can decide to start your own private practice. Obviously, at that point, you're going to need to so a fitness specialist is hot because everybody's going in this direction, okay? Number seven, 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 seven. Number seven is an entertainer. Now, people that fall into this category are musicians, comedians, impressionists, uh, ventriloquists, and those kind of people. These are all entertainers. Now, entertainers are very good because sometimes you go to a club and there is this live performance by someone you've never heard of before, but you hear her voice or you hear his voice. Oh my God, he raps very well. Oh my God, she sings very well. Oh my God, he's so funny. <laughs> God, I'm sorry. <laughs> so there's, if you're an entertainer in your home country, but you need to be mindful that if your home country is a country that speaks French and you're traveling to England, maybe there's a mismatch there because England, they speak English. Or if your home country is a country where they speak Dutch like Brazil um, and you're traveling to America, there's a mismatch there. The language predominant in America is English, okay? So maybe if you speak French and you're from France and you're a comedian or you're a musician in France and you want to go to Canada, that's good. You just need to find the part of Canada that is more predominantly French speaking, okay? So this is a job that you could get. The, the earning potential in this job is quite flexible, honestly. In England, you could get paid very poorly, you could get paid very well. It depends on the city that you find yourself in. If you're in London, good job. If you're in New York in America, good job. If you're in Sydney in Australia, good job. These are places where the cost of living is very high. So when you get, get a gig, you're definitely going to be paid high as well. Because places that have a high cost of living, the job you land in those cities, you're going to get paid high to meet up with the cost of living. Okay, okay, okay. Now, number eight. Finally, finally, we are in the last one. Number eight. Now, a language expert. Now, there's a place for language expert in all spheres of life. I'm talking about every sector. So if you're from England, if you're from India and you speak Punjabi, or you're from France and you speak French, and you're from Nigeria, you speak Igbo, Hausa, Yoruba, Shekiri, and all these other languages, or you're from South Africa or whatever country you're from, you meet people that are very crazy about languages and are willing to pay you money to learn languages. So if you know, learn, if you know one, two, three, four, five languages, good for you. You're gonna get paid well because you could work and teach this person this language, teach this person, teach the other person. And you could get attached to a company that all they do is translate documents or act as translators for the UN, for the embassy, or you could even get attached to an embassy and help them prepare the documents in different languages. Now you get paid wicked money for doing this. I'm talking about up, upwards of $5,000 if you're in the US, upwards of $6,000 if you are, 6,000 pounds if you're in England and euros if you're in a European country. Now, I have to say this as well. These eight jobs are four to five figure jobs. So I'm not even playing about this, okay? Now, you have to know something. You have to know something, okay? Like I said earlier, with each and every one of these jobs that I just listed in this video, when you start small by attaching yourself as an employee to a company that offers this service, whether formal or informally, you are not going to be you're not going to catch the eyes of the authority. So you're not going to need any form of regulation, informal certification, or something like this. This only starts to kick in when you realize, oh my God, I'm too big for this position. I need to get 
a bigger position or I need to start my own establishment, start my own business, my own company based on being a hairstylist, being a hair, a beautician, being a fashion designer, being a fine artist, a sketcher, a cartoonist, being a fitness specialist, maybe own your own fitness gym or whatever. At that point, you're going to need certification. Now, let's get down into the figures, okay? I love figures. I love money. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now, let's get down to the cost benefit analysis. I promised you all at the beginning that I was going to break down the cost benefit analysis per job. As a hairstylist, now let's just go on average, okay? Now you could be in London and cut hairs or or do stuff like this for 20 pounds if you're in England or in America for $50. But in England for a fact, it, if you want to cut your hair, it starts with five dollars five pounds. If you want to cut your hair in England, when I was cutting my hair, when I went to a hair stylist, a barber to cut my hair, it was five pounds, okay? Now, in a day, you are not going to service less than 10 customers. So it's upwards of 10 customers. So if you charge five pounds and you're doing this a day for 10 customers, individual customers, that's a total of what 50 pounds in one day okay so if you're doing 50 pounds per day and maybe you're a christian okay or maybe you're a devout muslim and you don't work on fridays and for christians you don't work on sunday so you only work what six times in a week that's what 50 pounds times six that's a total of what 300 300 pounds, yeah? Now, if you're making 300 pounds in a week and we have four weeks in what? In a month, four weeks in a month, that's what? 300 times four, you're making 1,200 pounds a month, dude. When I was working for the insurance company in England, I was making 1,500, 1,600 pounds pounds per month that's inclusive of bonuses or whenever there's no bonus or whatever so if you're holding these positions you need to understand that you're going to be making good money now for a beautician if you're a beautician you're gonna be let's just take an on average you're gonna be making 150 pounds i'm using guys i'm using england because i spend time in england but all these jobs are relevant for most western countries most english speaking Western countries okay now in England if you're a beautician you could stand to make an average of 150 pounds per customer okay 150 pounds per customer now this job you could let me say on average five customers per day because when you start going into makeup it's more detail that goes into makeup so let's just say you could spend an hour or two hours working on just one customer and you have eight hours in a working day that's going to be just equate to four to five customers now if you multiply 150 pounds times what four customers what you have you arrive at 600 pounds is that correct yeah, 600 pounds more or less, 600 to 750 pounds if you want to make them five customers. If you multiply, this is per day, okay? If you multiply that by six days a week or even seven days a week, so people, if they, they also want to make an appearance on Sunday or Fridays, multiply that by seven, what do you get? So you, what you find out is being a beautician is very, very lucrative, okay? Now, if you're a fine artist, the base wage starts from 50 pounds, 50 pounds per commission. Now, let's be realistic, okay? Usually, you work on one commission per day, okay? Or at most two to three commissions per day. Now, if you work on three commissions per day, we're talking about 150 pounds per day and we're talking about roughly 150 pounds per day that if you multiply that by six what do you get now multiply that by 12 that's what you stand to make in a year okay you multiply that by six to get what you get for a week and you multiply that by four weeks multiply that by four to find out what you're going to be getting in a month and do that by 12, what you'll be getting in a year, okay? Now, a computer scientist, usually these jobs, you are paid per month, okay? Because you're working full-time in an establishment. The other ones also, you could be get paid per month, but you could negotiate to get paid per week, 
it depends on what city you're living you're living in and the cost of living of that city you can negotiate to get paid per week but you're not going to get paid per day okay so the amount of money the amount this calculation is actually what the establishment is going to be making by virtue of your application in these positions and obviously your salary is going to be negotiable with your employer and you're going to say listen i'm going to be giving you this money and this is the amount of money i want you to pay me in wages now if you're working for yourself and you are a sole proprietor then you obviously are going to be in charge of all the monies that comes in. So for a computer scientist, usually the base pay starts from five to ten thousand pounds or five to ten thousand dollars depending on the country that you're in. So you could do the calculation on what you're gonna be making per year. Now a fitness specialist, I know fitness specialists working in a gym, you get paid per hour, and usually the base pay in the UK starts from eleven pounds per hour. So you could calculate what you're be making in a month and in a year and for the language specialist it's just like a computer scientist job you get paid in a month because usually most language experts are affiliated with a school or with um, an embassy or with some most companies that are into translation and stuff like this you also get paid per month and the pay for a language expert usually starts from two to three thousand pounds depending on the kind of the size of the company you're working with it could also be as low as five hundred to a thousand pounds okay so you need to be guided guys i hope this video has been useful and beneficial to one two people out there if this video has been helpful to you i want you to do your boy a favor do me a solid go down there support what we're trying to do smash the subscribe button if you like the type of contents we drop why don't you think about about turning on your notification bell so whenever we drop new content you're in the know and you could catch our videos as they drop and why don't you share the video with your friends if you have friends or family members who are thinking of immigrating or who have immigrated to a different country and they're confused and maybe they're not meeting up to the expectations and they don't know what to do the sector to apply for a job or how best to apply the skills that they have to the best sector to get the most yield you could share this video with them so that they can stay informed you just might be helping somebody now why don't you give us a thumbs up if this video was helpful to you so that the youtube algorithm knows that this video is beneficial to people out there and they could show this video to more people like you who are living in other parts of the world and if you want to get close to fuse why don't you follow me on instagram my instagram handle is up there is at fuse chronicle slide into my dms send me messages and i'll be glad to respond to every message that comes in and every inquiry that comes in okay and i always say this guys happiness is your property you owe it to yourself to be happy don't settle for less always be happy if you're in a toxic relationship or you're in a toxic environment why don't you exit that situation and make yourself happy okay until the next one guys it's still fused i want you all to have an awesome week ahead bye bye for now